Hey viewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Got some 2005 Chevrolet. It's a Suburban. It's got the big 5.3. Uh, customer seats. It sounds like there's a bird chirping in the back. <laughs> well, I took it for a ride. Uh, it sounds like a bird chirping and some grinding. And when you get up to about 60, it's got some pretty heavy vibration. So in my opinion, it sounds like it needs a rear U-joint. I figure we'll get it up in the air and see what it really needs. <laughs> Yes, sir. It's got the classic rust and dust blowing out of this little guy. It's not loose yet. You don't feel it being loose, but when you see all that brown, sometimes orangish colored rust blowing out, pretty obvious what's going on. So these are kind of a unique U-joint. Uh, this one appears to be original still, and you can see it has these little ears sticking out, a little titty sticking out of there. Uh, they're plastic and that's how they hold the uh, outer cap in on the factory U-joint. They're impregnated with plastic in there. I assume it's, you know, blown in there somehow. But the only way to get them out is we heat them up and this thing blows out of there like one of those little black snakes you used to light on fire as a kid. Not a real snake, but you know, the ones you get and you stick on the ground, you light them and they grow. That's what these do. We heat them up, psh, all the plastic comes out, and your new U-joint will have clips on it. So, let me check the front U-joint. I guess well, we gotta pull the whole drive shaft anyways. Let me see if Napa has one of these. We'll get one, and I'll show you how we change uh, the U-joints on your Chevrolet when they're bone stock. Good news, Napa has one. The lady said, get after it. So we're gonna peel this apart. Take our straps off here. Now, if the U-joint's already been done, it's just standard procedure here. Let me go get us a screwdriver. Yeehaw, make sure you have your bucket ready up here on the other end. Because when you pull that out of the transfer case, there's a 90% chance if you don't have a bucket, you'll have the biggest mess of your life. It appears that the front U-joint is in really good shape. This one has the double plastic holder inners, double plastic donners, I don't know what you call them. These U-joints rarely fail. Spicer U-joints are fantastic, and I believe that's what GM uses. Um, and these things will usually outlast the vehicle here in New York, but let's uh, get the rear one cut out of there. So you can get a better look at it now and see that the U-joint, well, these caps work good. The other one's not so much. Oh, there we go. You can probably tap it back. But yeah. See the Steffi. Um, we'll take it. Probably knock this cap off. Go right here and pull that one off. Like I see, those ones are in good shape. A couple ways you can do it. We're going to use the cut and torch method. We're just going to knock the cross out. But I'll show you prior to doing that. You can also do them with a little butane torch, propane torch, if you have one, where you just heat up the cap here and watch him grow. Let me show you that and then we'll get the torch and just chop it off. This is my butane torch, but you have to use your imagination. You can use a regular butane torch. And what you would do is just start heating her up along here. Now the plastic goes all the way around here and all the way around here. We'll start heating her up, even though this isn't the method we're gonna use. I'll show you. It's pretty fun to little Little worm comes out of there, there it goes. See it coming out of there? I don't know if you guys will be able to see that or not on camera. But the little plastic worm shot right out of the hole there. And it continues to grow. And you just do that for a little bit. It usually only squirts out of one side. All right, it has a real distinct odor to it. You know when somebody's doing a, a GMU joint. And then you do the same thing on this side. I don't know what the proper method is, but this is how we've done it for a lot of years. You can see the plastic oozing up out of there right now. You see that? That's fun, right? So, anyhow, you would do that. Oh, she just shot me with a little plastic worm facial. It didn't hit me in the face, so thank goodness. Uh, I had my squints on anyways see in case you don't believe me um, but you do have to watch for that because she'll get you uh, they'll build that pressure and they'll smoke it and then now you could drive the u-joint out as you would any other normal u-joint or use the arbor press or whatever it is you use this is our press 
So we're gonna take and cut the joint. These are steel view joints, you gotta be careful. Make sure you're cutting away from yourself. Cut towards your buddy, not your body, okay? Because they can make a little pop. It'll scare you. There it is, old son. Well, sometimes, you give a little tap like that, you'll knock the center out of the cup. So we do that. You're almost out there, little fella. There she goes. Now we'll take her over on the bench. We'll knock the caps out. Don't uh, just stick it on the bench. Whack them suckers, because you'll take a chance of pushing the ears together. So, let's get a punch and go do that. Right, so we're gonna stick her in the vise just like so. This way here, we're not gonna take a chance of knocking those ears together. Got her up on a couple blocks, try not to knock it on the floor. There's that side. Easy. Toasty. Well, I'll show you. It's not hot. Just didn't take me long to look at it. You can see it's got this groove around here, and that's where the plastic, I guess it's plastic, the retaining stuff is uh, injected around this. Smells like plastic when it's burning, but there's a uh, corresponding groove in the drive shaft, too. And this is where people get in trouble. You got to clean that junk out. And you got to get the old burnt plastic off there. Easiest way to do it is just heat it up and we'll take a 90 degree pick and we'll just scrape it out of there. Whoa. But you've got to make sure you get that stuff out on both sides. So let me do that. So we're going to heat her up a little bit. You can use your butane torch again. Oh. Yay, yeah, we got it. So just go through here. You don't have to turn it like blood red. Just enough to start making that plastic melt. Usually the plastic will get kind of hard after it heats up and cools down, and then you can flick it right out of there. Sometimes it just curls up and comes right out of there itself. Yeah. You just don't want it binding up when you go to stick the new caps in, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, dude? Let's come through here. Heat her up. Like I say, it usually just kind of curls up and falls right out of there. Yes, sir. All right, we're in good shape for the shape we're in. Now we just need to clean out the uh, caps and then the other important spot on here to make sure that's clean is is right down here on these, yeah, on the flat, on the flat side of the drive shaft here on the inside because the new U-joint is gonna have clips that click on here. So you don't want a, a lot of rust buildup here. So 
I typically will just throw these in the sand blaster and just, you know, blast, blast this off. But we'll use a little flappy wheel. Uh, in this case, this one's pretty clean. So we'll just run a little flappy wheel up inside here. Run it across here, make sure everything's clean, wait for Napa to show up with the joint. We'll be good to go. Got the flappy tool. So the flap tool is just about shot. All right, she's nice and shiny. And then we'll use your classic cleaning uppy tool. Make sure you got something covering up your juggler if you're using a tool like this. There, looks good. Uh, definitely not recommended. Don't use your cutoff wheel on the side like that. We're still waiting on napper. Uh, these have cooled down. As soon as they get here, we'll knock that join in. And then that's it. The rest is pretty much pretty easy. We got your flappy wheel out. Clean up the rear yoke here. This one's actually quite clean on this truck, surprisingly. These things can be super rusty. So little flap wheel's about smoked. All right, that's good. And then the other spot we need to clean up is in here. It's kind of a pick, just clean around inside of here. Looks like it has a little bit of a profile to it where the clip sits. You just wanna make sure that your joint's gonna sit nice and centered in there. really nice. Now take the caps, the, the little uh, covers here, out over on my cart, and go clean them off too. Uh, be mindful of a, you know, like a rust ridge on them. Don't just wire wheel them, because sometimes that just smooths it over, but, um, you know, use a flappy wheel or whatever you've got to clean it off. Let's go have a look at them. So these ones aren't too bad, but you can see the U-joint doesn't sit on the whole thing. So just make sure you're cleaning that little rust ridge off there. And then you can wire wheel them up. You know, you can use a little cookie wheel and wing, wing, wing. You know, if we had an air hose, it would make a sound like that. Let's find a hose. Let's show accurate my uh, sound effect was. Wing, wing, wing. Yeah, pretty cool. Just want to get rid of that rust. So get out of here, rust. And that's pretty well it. I'll go hit, hit him on the wire wheel over there on old Roger. And then she's good to go. Who knows? Maybe Nap will be here by the time we're done. Napper finally showed up. It's a classic 534G. If you're buying an SKF U joint, that's the number anyways. It'd be really nice if somebody around here carried uh, you know, the good brand, Spicer, but nobody carries Spicer. You always have to order them. But we need this fixed right now. We're gonna slide this little guy up in here. Stick a cap on there. Flip it around. Flip it back around. going in harder than expected. Isn't that lovely? Now oh, let me get black wood here. They're a little tough. 
you have to be cautious, you know, is when you can let it go so you don't drop the needles. You're not being a real tough guy today, are you? Finger pinchers. It's uh Yippee! So she's ready to go. Slide them little guys on. Of course, make sure you don't have it full of, you know, dirt and junk. And that's that. We got to put the clips on these little fellas. They've got some beefy clips on her, boys. That's all I got. Oh, easy fella. Give them a little squeeze, and now you're good to go. We'll put her on, we'll pump a little grease in her, and everybody will be happy. Oh, let's see. We're gonna slip her right up in the transfer case. Which is really nothing special about that. And then, prior to doing anything here, Give her a spritz of your favorite slippery stuff. And then before, you don't don't just go sticking it in. You've got to make sure your clips are not facing, you know, they're only like half moon shaped. So they only go, well, a little more than half. Around maybe two thirds around. Make sure they're not facing towards you. But they're facing into the yoke. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You will, you'll see. And then we'll line her right up, just like so. And she should slip down in very nicely, all the way, just by hand. If you've got to beat it in, you're probably doing it wrong. You might have to very, very lightly tap it, but if you've got everything cleaned up, they'll usually slide right in. Take these little guys, give them a little spritz, if you will. Stick them back up there. I might mention this is a lot easier to do when the vehicle is in neutral, which this one is. Spin her around. Take the other one. We'll grab our wrench. Not that side, we'll use this side. It's the 11 millimeter variety. Here, snug her up. With that, we'll grab a little screwdriver. Give them a little snug. That guy a little snug. Give that guy a little snug. And then come back through with your torque wrench and torque them to factory specs. Now we'll get up in here and give her a little shot of grease. Oh, come on, baby. Don't. There she goes. I see it coming up out of the cap. Wipe off our excess. There she is. That's it, folks. Looks like we want to make sure we got grease coming out of all four caps, and it looks like we do. Yeehaw! So these SKF joints, the greasable ones, the grease fitting, is right in the middle of the joint. It's not offset to one side or the other, like some of them are, 
which makes them kind of a pain because without special adapter you can't get up in here and, and get on these so you can use this style adapter you can use the blunt point needle adapter and that's about all you can get in there on these ones with so it makes them kind of a pain if you want a greasable joint get the ones that go in the end of the cap those sometimes are a lot easier for the homeowner to do if you don't have you know anything special um, or my suggestion would be given a choice in time would be to buy the non-greasable spicer u-joint they're the, by far the strongest u-joints on the planet and that's not a fact it may be a fact but in my opinion you put a spicer in there last rest of your life that's their motto buy a spicer last rest of your life that may not be true either but one thing that i know is true folks is that we're done with this chevrolet well almost it still needs knock sensors and front wheel bearings and some other stuff but this part of it's done and I don't want you to be done with this video until you click in that comment section. The Insta, the Facebook, leave a comment down there. You guys know what to do. And uh, just my viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.